Hosea chapter 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Go ye love a woman, beloved of her friend. Now, when we first started the Bible, it says in chapter 1, verse 2, he says, Go take thee a wife. Chapter 3, he says, Go love a woman, beloved of her friend. Is, here's this woman. Maybe Gomer. And she's attached herself to someone else. Because it says, yet an adulteress. And it's, is the friend the adulterer? Or is this friend keeping quiet? I'm not going to tell anybody. But there's adultery, yet this adulteress. Now, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel is the adulteress. And we learn that with gods and images and religion and idols. Everything but God. But in the name of God, it grows. Because we can take Easter and wish you forget that and stop it. And we can take Christmas... And we could put a Christian tag. But it ain't Christian at all. And it's not approved of God. And this is what Israel's doing. Listen, we as a church are in the last days of Hosea. We are in the last days of Jeremiah. Now, the Chaldeans ain't going to come in. The Ninevites are not going to come in. He's not going to destroy the walls and the buildings and all that. He's going to rapture us out of here. And the hardest thing is we can live a whole life of doing wrong, being blessed by the devil, and thinking, oh, it's been God and the Holy Spirit all along. But actuality, if you sit down and look at what you're doing and really examine it with a Bible, I mean, we're going to celebrate Easter, and we're 2,000 years after Jesus Christ, and yet the Bible, there's only one place the word Easter shows up, and it's a reference to the holiday of Herod. So, here is the love of Israel. There are adulteresses who look to other gods. Now, God is the husband of Israel. Jesus is the husband of the, of the church. And he still loves her. He's still going to forgive her. Yet, one of the divorces claimed by God, Jesus Christ himself, fornication. So, it's not immediate, you know, if your spouse goes to commit adultery on you, that, you know, all right, go ahead, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, get the divorce. Try to work things out. Try to get things right. Just like God did. Yes, Jesus Christ said, adultery breaks a marriage. But he said to that woman, you got four husbands and the one that you got right now. Ain't your husband. And the actuality of God, Jehovah to Israel, God's like, All right, you keep on doing what you want to do, but I love you. And we'll read on. And love of flagons of wine. He said, What do you got to put that wine at? What's that wine been ever since? It's the drink offerings to the gods and not to God. The very first offering was, was Jacob offering a, a drink offering, anointed offering on the rocks that he slept on. And that has turned into gods. Because very much what the Catholic Church calls a mass is their love of flagons of wine and Episcopal Church and all that 
is they literally claim that this is the body and blood blood of Jesus when the Bible before the law speaking to Noah during the law spoken to Moses and Israel and the church is spoken about James to the church to the missionaries going to go out to the Gentiles there is forbidden the eating of blood That flagons of wine brings to us not only the, the pleasures and joy of, of, of grape juice to intoxicating liquor, but it brings us to the religions of this is the body and this is the blood. This is offered out to the gods. Listen, the Catholics have, have a, a, a communion, a mass. The Episcopal Church has a, has a communion. The, the churches have it. Not all churches are doing it of God. Pagan, Wicca, has their offerings of, of, of a wine. I guarantee somewhere in the Catholic Church they got to have a, a, a storage of their Jesus blood. Well, he's not turned to Jesus blood yet. So I bought her to me. He, he, he brought. He brought. He bought. Not brought. Bought. God purchased Israel the night that those lambs were slain and the blood was put on it. He redeemed Israel and called them out of Egypt. He redeemed the Christians, the true Christians, by the blood of Jesus Christ. He bought her to me. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver. You see, well, that's half the price of Jesus. No, it's not. Because we're not done yet. The silver is a price of redemption in the Bible. Because not only was it 15 pieces of silver, but also a homer of barley and half a homer of barley. Now, I don't know how much a homer of barley, barley costs. But for a, a, hom a homer and a half of barley, wouldn't it be interesting that was 15 cents? I don't know. I can't say. I don't know what the prices were. Now see, now you can take a Bible and teach anything you want. Well, you see, you know, if I'm in the land of America, and if I build the ark, I can charge people to come see what the ark looked like. No commandment. Unless your name is Noah, and there's a big worldwide flood coming. Jesus, I mean God, who is Jesus, said there will be no more worldwide flood, so there would be no need to build an ark. But if I were to go run into a, into the Bible and say, hey, I want to start a heresy, I want to start a religion, I want to start an occult, you can do that with the Bible. It's been done. David Koresh. So if I want to say, hey, I want a man to be married any amount of wives he wants to, to have for, for a marriage. Hey, David done it. I don't know if Saul did it. Solomon definitely did it. And look at that. They were children of God and God praised them. Mormons. Utah. Oh, you know what? I want to have a religion where, you know, I can go marry prostitutes. I can go buy me a wife. Hosea 3 2. Hosea chapter 1. He says that possible. You can go over the Orient today, China and, and, and island nations, and you can deal with the parents, the, the fathers and the brothers, and, and maybe the, the mothers. And the, 
You can purchase yourself a woman to be your wife. Hosea 3 2. And it may cost you some money, it may cost you some beats and rat. I don't know. You can get a thing called mail order bride. You can order a bride through the mail. You pay her way and all that, and you bring her. There it is. Problem verse 1 says Israel. Problem number 2, this is Old Testament. Problem number 3, there is no church. Problem number 4 is you didn't rightly divide the word of God, and now you're going to be made ashamed. In the time of Paul, there were people saying that, oh, the resurrection already happened. Paul's like, looking at Timotheus and Silas. Ow, Paul, what'd you pinch me for? I just want to see if we've been resurrected or not. That's what they're saying. It's already happened. How come we missed it? If the resurrection already happened, how come Paul, Timotheus, Silas, and James, who was killed, and Peter, how did they miss it? And so you're going to go to your Baptist church, you're going to want, well, you know, it's got to be right. The pastor, and, you know, has it. It don't got to be right. For anybody else, for Hosea, now you realize that Hosea chapter 1, Hosea chapter 3, it's a violation of the law. But Hosea has been given a special grant by God. And Hosea will have his problems. I guarantee it was not very, if I can say, kosher for, for Hosea to go be walking to the street market without saying, hey, there's a guy that married a whore in the name of God. <laughs> yeah, what about that wife, Homer? <laughs> Cost him a Homer, uh, I mean, Gomer. Cost them a home or a bar to get that woman. That's what I want to say. Gomer cost them a home or a barley. What's the story of barley? Barley is, comes to the, the harvest of Passover and the unleavened bread, and it brings us to the wonderful story of the love of Ruth. And Boaz. Because when Ruth goes out in the field, she's picking barley. That's the Passover time. And it's not a barley harvest. That's bread he's talking about. Did you see verse 1, the wine? The bread and the wine. Takes his cake. It's a symbol of my body that be broken for you. The bread. Take this cup. The wine. There's the one. This is a symbolic. It is not my blood. Which will be shed for the New Testament. That I am coming back. You have to take it as symbolic. Because, first of all, there's no Jesus Christ in Hosea. And can you see Peter... Oh, yeah, let, let me be the first one to stick Jesus' arm and get a blood thing. Come on, if Jesus would have said, literally, eat my body and blood, Peter would have been the first one to speak up. But did you just see that? There's the, the body of Jesus Christ. Hosea 3, 1 and 3, 2, for a nation of people who are in whoredoms, a nation of people who are in adultery, and God comes in the body and blood and dies upon Calvary's priest, cross. He came unto his own, and his own did, re, did not receive it. The church comes in because Israel corporate has rejected their Messiah. I'm going to show you the church. But first, for Israel, it's been paid by the body and by the blood, verses 2 and verses 1.
And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. You put an R in a in a bride, you would have a bride. Thou shalt not play the harlot. I see that she's selling herself. Gomer was a harlot. Now, if, if this is still Gomer, she's left. She's been unfaithful. And he goes back and gets her. And thou shalt not be for another man. It's supposed to be for God, Israel. But they got Baal. They got the Queen of Heaven, Jeremiah. They got Asterisk, Ishtar, Easter, Church. You got another Jesus of Tammuz, church. And you are committing adultery against Jesus Christ, our bride. And the husband, the man that this church, our church, our period, is committing adultery against Jesus is we are sleeping with the devil. Because he's in the church and Jesus is outside the door knocking. And the door is closed. It's not the husband opening up the bedroom door and there's his wife with another man. It's, I know you're in there with another man. I ain't coming in. I'm going to knock. If you will come out and you're willingly come to me and repent and get right, we will suck together. But he ain't going to come and enter into you if you're going to keep on holding hands with Satan. With your pants off. For the children of Israel shall by many days without a king. Let me ask you a question. What king is in Israel today? Okay, next. Without a prince. What prince is in Israel today? Without a sacrifice. Where do the Hebrew Jews of the world go today to offer their sacrifice to God? There, there is no king, there is no sacrifice, there is no prince. Hosea 4 is the church age today. You can go to Jerusalem, but you ain't going to the temple. <clears throat> and if you chance go to the temple, you're going to Allah. And you're going to the rock where... Muhammad and Michael supposedly resurrected or something, whatever it is they believe. Hosea 3 4 is the church age. She has no king, she has no prince, she has no sacrifice because she rejected her husband, God, without an image. They were going to the temple with their images. And Christians today, they go to church with their images, their crosses, their tattoos, their Bibles with a picture of a European Jesus, their Easter eggs, their Easter hats, their Easter dresses, their Christmas bows, their Christmas gifts, their Christmas toilet paper for Jesus. The Christmas tree, the Christmas ornaments, the Christmas, here's the Magi with the shepherds, anti-scriptural. Here I come, Jesus, here I come to church, and I'm 40 days of Lenten. Israel does not have, the Jews do not have really an image to that. They did. That's what we're reading about, Hosea. Idols and imagery. And this is what we read in Jeremiah. Joshua, he's about to die. He says, listen, as for me and my house, we know the scripture. He tells Israel, 
You got to give up those gods that you're holding in your hand. Oh, we'll serve God. I never did put the images and gods away. Jacob said, well, okay, hold on, we're going back to Bethel. But first, give me all that crap. And change your clothes. That was interesting. I'm amazed to see somebody go to church dressed the way they are. And I'm not talking about the people who come and visit. I'm not talking about the newbie Christians because I, I, I didn't dress right. But within time, you would figure they would they would figure, out, hey, you know what? This may not be right, approved by God, unless the preacher ain't preaching against that stuff. Without an ephah, that's the priest. Without the teraphim, that's God's. Hosea 3, 4 is the nation of Israel today. And they celebrate the Passover, but they have nowhere to go. They're supposed to three times a year. The Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Day of Atonement. They're supposed to go to Jerusalem. They're supposed to bring their sacrifice. They're supposed to bring it to one place. One place designed by God. There's the place. There's no place for sacrifice. How on earth can the Jew read Hosea 3, 4 and not realize, that's us today. we got a problem. They, they probably change it. They probably have some other teaching. I mean, after all, Isaiah 53, talking about the, surf, the suffering servant, the suffering Messiah, and they will tell you, well, that's the nation of Israel. It's what the Gentiles have done to us. They changed the scripture. And friend, that's the Baptist church today. And if you want to change scripture, you just get yourself an NIV, PDQ, everyone, everybody, you, Bible. You, you hold to the beliefs of any Bible, you don't have to believe at all, but the King James Bible, and you got yourself any other kind of teaching. And if you're a King James in a messed up church with a messed up butt, that preacher will either, he'll throw some King James in there to try to plead you. You ain't, you ain't fooling me, brother. And, uh, it may be good teaching, but you ain't doing right. right? I tried to help you a couple times. Oh, I'm going to do it my way. And then, you know, okay. I'll shut up. Afterward. Shall the children of Israel return? There's a second advent. See that return? After the church age and the millennium. And shall so seek the Lord their God. David their king. David, you know how many years David's been dead? <laughs> David's not coming back as a zombie. He's going to come back into Israel, a king and a prince under Jesus Christ. And to fear the Lord and his goodness in the, get it, latter days. There's the second advent. There's the millennium. There's the eternal life for the Jews. God ain't finished with them. It comes after a period. No king, no prince, no sacrifice, no image, no ephod, no teraphim. That is the church age. Because guess what's going to happen, I don't know, before or after the rapture, but I'll tell you what's going to happen. As the church comes to a close, and the rapture will happen, could be before the rapture, could be after the rapture, there's going to be, a, there's going to be the temple's going to be built, and the Jews are going to be offering their offerings, and the Antichrist is going to allow for them to offer the lamb in the morning, and the land at night, except for after three and a half years, and he's going to break it. They're going to be hell on earth the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. And the Jews will still have no king. They will have no prince. They will have no more sacrifice. They will... You don't want the image of the Tribulation period. Because guess who that image is? Th chapter 3, verse 4 is a double application. Without an ephah. Without a terror, I want the Antichrist is going to have priests running around with their collars on backwards. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Come into this closet and tell me all your secrets. Mm -hmm. 
and afterward the children of Israel shall return under Jesus Christ on the white horse with the crown, the King of Kings, the, the Lord of Lords, and the church. I'll be riding an ass. <laughs> Seek the Lord their God. <laughs> <coughs> David, their king. Here's it. Us Christians are going to meet David one day. And we're going to see David reign in the fear of the Lord. His goodness. That's the millennium. That's the curse that's removed. That's the blessing. That's the singing. That's the new wine. That's all the, the cattle. No hamburger joint. That's all the, the blessings of the wounds of the women and of the, of the animals and the pastors and the just the freshness, just the wonderfulness of God in the millennium. I don't read the Old Testament. I wonder how many, how often your Baptists today go through Hosea. We just read the church age, the tribulation period, and the second advent, and the millennium. If you were to be kidnapped, lost, and Lord forbid, there's there's a lot of that happens. The news is now some woman was killed and put into a duffel bag. And, I mean, that, that's horrible. That's wickedness. It's just. But let's say you were lost, and the only thing they had was the Book of Hosea of a Bible, and they needed your DNA to help find you. Would your DNA be in the book of Hosea? Your fingerprints. You know, listen, I've got coffee stains in my Bible. I've got blood in my Bible. My blood. Snot, fingernails, hair. All through the Bible. If I, if I was ever to be kidnapped by the Baptist priest, uh, excuse me, if I were to be kidnapped, and they wanted DNA evidence. Well, here's his Bible. Whoa. Man, we got enough for a thousand stylies. All 66 books has got some kind of thing of him. What about your Bible? There are people, we're King James only. Their King James Bible still in plastic, still in the box. <laughs> Open it. There's nothing like the smell of a new Bible. But it, it, there's no good smell of a new Bible when it's never been read. God gave us 66 books. I read just my Psalms. I'm not blessed by God. Because Psalms are not written to you. I'm just saying what, what I've learned. I, I've been a Christian since 1987. I, I, don't, I don't know, 34, 35 years. I think I learned something. 